Okay, so we're going to do a review on latitude and longitude lines. Latitude lines are measured north or south of the equator. They are parallels, so they never meet. The equator is the most important line of latitude. It is from which all latitude lines are measured. The equator measures at zero degrees latitude. Any line north of the equator is labeled with a degree sign and an N behind it, with a number in front of it to tell you how far it is away from the equator. Any latitude line to the south of the equator is labeled with a degree sign with an S with a number in front of it to tell you how far away it is from the equator. The further you get away from the equator, the number gets larger. Now, based on that, which would be further away from the equator? Would it be 55 degrees north, 32 degrees south, 75 degrees south, or 57 degrees north? Now, we're looking for the largest number here, and that would show that it's getting further away from the equator. If you picked 75 degrees south, then you would be correct. Let's go to the next set of latitude lines. Which would be further away from the equator? 5 degrees north, 80 degrees south, 28 degrees south, or 45 degrees north? Now let's look at those numbers. Think about it for a few minutes not a few minutes for a few seconds. And the correct answer is 80 degrees south. That's the biggest number here. So we know that that's farthest away from the equator. Notice I don't have any numbers in the latitudes that's bigger than 90 degrees. I will never have a latitude line that's bigger than 90. Uh, the 90 degree mark on the north 90 degree mark is at the North Pole. And the um, 90 degree mark south is the South Pole. So let's go to this last one. Which would be further away from the equator? Get my pointer here. Which would be further away from the equator? Is it 10 degrees north, 2 degrees south, 9 degrees south, or 7 degrees north? Let's look at those numbers. Think about what we're looking for, which one's furthest away from the equator. And we're just really looking for the numbers. The larger they get, the further they are from the equator. So if you pick 10 degrees north, then you would be right. Let's look at hemispheres. We can divide the Earth in half in two different ways. We can divide it north and south. We can also divide it east and west. In this case, we're looking at the hemispheres of the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. The northern hemisphere is the half of the Earth to the north of the equator. The southern hemisphere is the half of the Earth to the south of the equator. So we're cutting this in half, not literally, but figuratively, by uh, looking at the equator, and that's anything north of that would be the half of the sphere, half of the globe or ball that is in the northern part. And then the equator, south, anything south of the equator would be considered the southern hemisphere. Important lines of latitude. A good way of remembering where these are, and it really makes, you know, it's it's really not um, a true statement. It's just kind of like a word association or something like that, is to remember that which would be heavier. If you put weight to words, which would be heavier, Arctic Circle or Antarctic Circle? Well, we know that Antarctic has more letters in it, so it would sink. And that's just a way that I remember that the Antarctic Circle is at the bottom here, and the Arctic Circle would float to the top. It's not a, a real thing. You know, these lines aren't real in real life, but we use them to be able to pinpoint places on Earth. So at the 66 and a half degrees north mark, uh, this is showing where the Arctic region to the north is located. And then the Antarctic Circle is the 66 and a half degrees south mark. So anything below that to the south of that line is considered Arctic regions. So we can look at these caps and we know these are Arctic regions. And there are some really interesting things about the Arctic regions that we'll talk about here in a minute. 
We'll go back to that same type of, um, just to remember where these are located by using um, uh, just a test take taking scale and it's Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Which one would weigh the most if you gave weight to words? We know we can't do that, uh, but Capricorn has more letters in it. So that is why it would sink and cancer would float. And that's just a way I remember where these are located. And Tropic of Cancer is located at 23 and a half degrees north. The Tropic of Capricorn is 23 and a half degrees south. This area in here is considered tropical region. Tropical regions have some very distinct qualities to the way their climate is. And um, we'll talk about that here in a minute. And of course, we've got the equator at zero degrees, and that's the most important line of latitude. It uh, is where all other latitude lines are measured from this particular uh, line. Tropical regions is the area between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. In this area, the seasons all seem the same, warm and in some places really hot. But you can't tell one season from another, like fall, winter, spring and summer, you really can't tell the difference because it's always pretty much the same. In Arctic regions, uh, these are regions to the north of the Arctic Circle and to the south of the Antarctic Circle. And in these regions, it shows extreme seasonal differences. In the summer, it's always like it's daytime, and in the winter, it's always dark. So um, it's also really cold in Arctic regions. So that's something to remember about Arctic regions. Word of the day is precipitation. You probably will hear this uh, if you ever listen to the news when they talk about the weather. Um, so precipitation is any type of water that comes out of the clouds in the sky. So it could be rainfall, hail, snow, sleet. Longitude lines. Now longitude lines are different in several ways from latitude lines. Uh, they run up and down and they meet at the North Pole and the South Pole. I always tell you that, uh, remember they go the long way around your body, so they go up and down. They are not parallel lines. They do intersect at the poles. So they get closer together when they get closer to the poles until they actually meet. They get further apart the closer they get to the equator and then they meet at the poles. They also, they measure how far east or west they are from the prime meridian and they go from zero to 180 degrees. Now this is different from latitude lines. Remember latitude lines only go from zero to 90 degrees when they reach the poles. On When you're talking about uh, lo longitude lines, they go from zero at the prime meridian all the way to 180 degrees, either east or west, depending on whether they go east or west of the prime meridian. The prime meridian and international date line. The prime meridian is at zero degrees longitude. All other longitude lines are measured according to how far away they are from the prime meridian. Some of the international date line is at the 180 degree mark on the opposite side of the globe. So if you look at the opposite side of the globe from the prime meridian, you go around to the back, you'll see this international date line. Now you see it gets kind of wonky through here, but for the most part on this straight stretch, that's 180 degrees. Hemispheres again, like I said before, you can divide the earth in half by using the equator, but you can also divide the earth in half, not literally, but uh, figuratively, you can divide the earth in half, uh, by the way, the prime meridian. So any points east of the prime meridian is in the eastern hemisphere, and the same thing can be said west of the prime meridian is the western hemisphere. So here in the United States, we are in the northern hemisphere, so we're above the equator, and we are to the west of the prime meridian, so we're in the western hemisphere. Thank you for watching, and I appreciate your attention, and I hope this video helped you review latitude and longitude.